Hey everyone, welcome to Peepside. I'm Josh. And I'm Joe. And I want to talk about guns and shooting and outdoor stuff like that. Yeah, so many of you are wondering why our channel is called Peep Site, and uh, I happen to know somebody that owns a lot of Peep Sites. I've got one or two. <laughs> Just one or two. Explain what's going on here. Okay. Well, a Peep Site is actually just a or aperture site or receiver site. It's the check is clear. Actually, the rear sight on the firearm, the circle disc. That you're going to look through and lining up with the front sight when you align yourself with your target. It's called the peep sight because it's just a little tiny peephole or a round circle. But the way that this is going to work is similar to a traditional uh, iron sight setup where you've got the notch in the back and the blade in the front. Instead of the notch, that's gone. You're just going to center the top of the blade or uh, the dot if it's a bead in the middle of the circle. You're going to focus on your front sight and then align that with what you're trying to, to aim at. So a lot of people tell me that peep sights aren't relevant anymore, Joe. Can you believe that? I can believe they say it, but I don't believe it. <laughs> but uh, in this rainy day of North Idaho, I want you to kind of show me what's going on with peep sights and maybe answer some of my questions if you're okay with that. Yeah, we can do that. Yes, definitely. Definitely rains a lot in Idaho, and that's one of the main reasons why I use peep sights quite a bit thinking about ever moving to North Idaho. Just remember, we got about 320 days of rain a year here. Just about. So I thought about buying a peep sight, but I had a little hesitation. Some people told me that I can't use them on modern guns. So, care to answer that? or? Uh, well, America's Rifles, one of the most modern guns out there, and it actually was designed with, with a peep sight on it. This is a slightly cut down version. Originally, they came with a carrying handle. But the aperture sight was protected by the wings, and that's about your, your most modern iteration of a America's rifle of choice. It is best equipped with a peep sight, as far as iron sights go. They do work very well with optics as well. So you could throw an optic on that if you wanted to. Absolutely. Most people end up doing that, but there are some advantages to the peep sight. This hunting rifle here... Um, Actually, didn't come with any sights at all. We added the barrel band. It needs to be reblued, as you can see, it's wearing off a little bit. But uh, this just bolted on to the receiver bridge of this Ruger. But they do make peep sights available for most of them. And then you just add the, the front sight band, which takes a little bit of work. But in the garage, was able to do that. Gotcha. So people also tell me, Joe, that you can't have any magnification on peep sights and therefore they're not good for hunting, they're not good for anything because there's no magnifications. Uh, it's true, there's no magnification on a peep sight, it, it's just um, just the iron sights itself. The way it's designed is it'll actually increase your focus and it, you seem to see things a little clearer. Uh, it could be just some disadvantages though, if you're doing a lot of long range prairie dog shooting, um, it's going to be more difficult because it's harder to pick up finer target details. Um, but there are some applications where magnification does help. Uh, there's other applications in the thick brush of Idaho. It's as much of a hindrance at times, I think, uh, to have too much magnification is definitely worse than, than none at all. But that's true. There is no magnification. It does increase your focus. Though. Yeah, and when you go hunting, how far is normally your shots that you take? Um, here, I, I mean, Shot the shot my bear last year at about 20 yards. So, I mean, so optics probably wouldn't help you there. It, it certainly wasn't going to help him now. <laughs> All right. So another issue that I get mentioned a lot is stock height. And I really don't understand what that means, but they say that that's an issue with peep sights. Uh, that's true. Um, when they're designing the stock of a gun or firearm, they're trying to design it for what the optimal um, dimensions of a body are. Uh, 100 years ago, 70 years ago even, the stock height was set for, for iron sights. 
This rifle was made for, for shooting with a scope. Let me put that to your shoulder and sight down the peeps. You okay. can see there's a little bit of squishing your cheek down in yeah. onto the comb. The comb's the, the top part of the gun there so that you can get a good clear sight picture. It's not very comfortable, but I can see the sight picture. It definitely works, but it's not optimal. I'm mulling over actually modifying the stock on that one. Versus this rifle here, you got a Marlin 30-30. Good old lever action. That was designed to be shot with iron sights. Now, how does that feel on your cheek, and is it easier to get? It's not only just easier on my cheek, but it's easier to move. I can see the sight picture really well. I like the peep sights. Yes, and it's that one works very well. I've actually tried scopes and red dots and everything on this rifle, and the peep sight is the only option that's worth keeping in my opinion on it. It's just much more comfortable. It just happy. looks so natural too. It does. It, it's not cluttered up at all. All right. And the last disadvantage that people tell me about peep sights is the sight picture and the learning curve. So when you're shooting a peep sight versus a scope, you shot a scope uh, gun or a red dot before, everything's on the same plane. So when you've got a, a target and then you've got a front sight and then a rear sight, so those are three separate planes. When you put that piece of glass there for the reticle of the, the optic, everything is on the same plane, and you only have to focus your eye in one spot uh, versus the three. You can't focus your eye in three locations. So when you're shooting a, a peep-sighted firearm, you're actually going to be using the front sight post is going to be your point of focus. You want that crystal clear. The rear sight will actually wash out with the peep sight, and that's why sometimes they'll call the ghost rings or the larger aperture ones because it'll it'll fade away. Your eye will naturally align it. It's very natural to use. There's less of a learning curve there than with iron sights, but the scope um, does seem to be easier for people to pick up on. And that's because of the amount of planes. There is learning curve, but there's learning curve with shooting guns all around. So. That argument could be made either way, I think. Understood. So, Joe, I think that's all the disadvantages that people told me about. Is there any other, like, advantages with peep sights? I think quite a few. Um, it's a super durable piece of equipment. I mean, we could literally take this firearm, turn it over, drop it on the ground, and then pick it up and shoot. I mean, this is made to be used by Marines, and Marines are hard on stuff, especially in combat. It's, it's extremely durable. It's a combat-worthy sight. Um, but even the one here on my my Ruger, it's got the wings, very durable. It's lightweight. I mean, it's clean lines on the gun. It's very inexpensive. Total setup for the sights on this one, which is more expensive, is probably $200 for the blade, the hood, the band, um, and then the, the ghost ring rear on it. So $200, which is what the scope itself would cost for more more scope or modern scopes, not counting rings and mounts. What's the make on that? This is a New England custom gun. This one works really well. The blade's a little bit wider, so it's, it's better for closer in shooting. Uh, I do like this a lot. This one here has got a Skinner. Skinner sights. They're out of Montana. They can't be too bad if they're next door to us there. Yeah. Real Real clean lines, very durable steel. I love their front sight blade. It's super clean, um, very narrow. And what that allows is a lot more precision, I feel, in the shooting. I could see it being a disadvantage, perhaps, compared to the wider sight if it's dark in the deep timber. And you're going to lose a little bit of the ability to pick it up for this uh preciseness but you can adjust that by painting the front sight blade depending on the conditions of the time of the year they sell cheap markers for that very durable very very affordable this whole setup here was less than a hundred dollars and i can't get a decent quality scope for that kind of money very clean where i want to hold the rifle is over the sight so it'll carry very naturally and it just works extremely well they've got other stuff I've got one on my shotgun set up with uh, let's shake some of Idaho off of it here. <laughs> um, 
Nothing wrong with an 870. A good old 870. It's got the, the Wilson Combat sights on it. Very durable. You could, if you wanted to, pull them back off and swap the barrel back. If you, um, all right, you just get a second 870. But these these Scattergun Tech, I think they were used to be Wilson Combat brand, but they work really well if you're going to be using it more for slugs. If you're going to be doing some turkey shooting, coyote shooting, or uh, more in your tactical realm, and then you can still shoot, trap, and skeet with it. It just doesn't work all that great in that context. And then precision shooting, um, there was a time when I was a 4-H rifle coach and and we would use these to teach the kids how to shoot and it works really well. I actually shoot this one more than all my other guns combined. Just a just a pellet rifle here. and Probably a little cheaper to shoot. Yeah, I shoot this thousands of times a year and we can all sit around and talk while we're doing it and not have to worry about our ears ringing and such. But I think they're super useful. It's you're getting a lot of advantage. There are disadvantages. I'm not going to lie, and I've got rifles with with optics on them, and there's applications for it. Um, there's people that do long range shooting, but if you're doing long range shooting, and it's harder to see the thing you're shooting at, it's not going to work well. If you can see the target clear as day because it's a brightly plated bullseye. That's one thing, or a boulder a mile out there. But if you're trying to see a, a brown deer on a brown hill on an overcast day, it may not work as well for you. Understood. What about this fiber optic one you got here on the 1022? Okay. This Interesting. One. That's different than all the other ones you have. It is. And I don't necessarily prefer it myself, but there's a the, the fire sight that Williams makes. They also make a, a gold bead. They're super fast to shoot. It, a lot of people that hunt in the timber, which is where I typically hunt, really like them because you can pick up that bead well it centers it's a super quick sighting system i feel you lose a little bit of precision when you get out there past 100 but it's not it's not really anything that you'll notice in the real world super fast the kids like learning on that and it came as part of the set so i didn't bother changing it at all but it works well i prefer the blade but this is easier to learn on i feel well, Joe, I like them. I, there's a lot I can take away from these. I mean, they're extremely lightweight, and they just look really clean on every gun. Seem really reliable, especially in this rain here in North Idaho. You don't have to worry about getting, you know, cleaning your lens or anything on your optic. And you don't have to worry about changing batteries either, which is nice too, because I hate changing batteries. That's true. Yeah, it's, um, I switched over, honestly, hunting in the fall and the rain here. Um, Switched over to using the peep sights mostly on my rifle because I never had to clean the lens off. Worst case scenario is one time there was a drop of rain that got lodged in there. So every once in a while I'll check down and make sure that there's not a raindrop in it. It's just one less thing to worry about when I'm hunting. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for watching the video. We appreciate your time. and We're a new channel, so we're just getting started, but we got a lot more to come. Thanks for joining us. I hope you learned something. Have a good time.